We're very excited at NC Square to be working with the National Museum for the Royal Navy. HMS Victory is going through a massive refurbishment at the moment. We're trying to preserve the ship for future generations. What they're actually doing is removing the entire outer skin of the ship. For a museum artefact, normally they'd be covered up and nice and dry whereas she's out in all the elements and um, wood has a lifespan and so it rots. And if we don't do something, she will start deteriorating and you know, start changing shape and um, basically falling apart. They have two criteria. They're looking to preserve the look of the ship so that it looks like it would have done in uh, Lord Nelson's time. But they also need to protect the underlying material of the ship. And that's where we come in. Victory is a fairly unique ship, not only because of what she is historically, but how she is. She sits in a dry dock, is completely exposed to the elements. The biggest enemy that HMS Victory has is the British weather. Be that rain or hail or ice or sunlight, all of those things can be damaging to her. We need to find a way to keep the weather out of her timbers. And that means finding decent paint schemes, uh, decent sealants or caulkings as they're called on ships. We need to bring in materials that are more bespoke for the situation that we've got. It's in dry dock, it's historical, it's using materials that you don't find in modern, many modern ships. The National Museum for the Royal Navy approached NC Squared to ask for our assistance to help make those selections in a more scientific way. So we're not just picking materials because they work on ships that are working, that are that active in water, but actually we are examining the environment that Victory experiences every day, every year, and we are testing for that specific environment. So we had to design tests in order to rank those materials. So we're trying to simulate what might happen over the next couple of years for paint, so the next 60 years for those corkings and glues which are buried in the ship. We're trying to simulate that, but in shorter tests. We designed tests that would be pulling apart, shearing, uh, flexing the materials, exposing them to conditions in which the screws might rust, conditions in which the paints might start to flake off under UV. We're going extreme temperatures down to minus 20, plus 70. So we're trying to be really nasty to these materials that they've selected. We're looking at UV and we are putting our paint schemes and our caulkings through UV testing to try and simulate the sunlight. We're having a look at salt spray testing on the fasteners because these are metallic in nature and therefore uh, will degrade with, in the presence of salt water and, and rainwater in general. And with Victory being in Portsmouth Dockyard, it's very close to a big body of salt water. So salt is a big enemy. By involving science in the selection of these materials, we should be able to select the best products to ensure that HMS Victory can withstand the elements, withstand the British weather for as long as possible. It will come down to the results of a series of controlled tests to allow us to make a very good evidence-based material selection. And it's been a great relationship. We've been able to go on the ship and have a tour, understand the context of what we're working on. And in return, we've been able to turn up with our test results and go through the results with the shipwrights, discussing how we will be feeding into the new set of tests, getting their input on the design at all stages. So it's not like they just threw us the samples and said, have at it. It's actually been a relationship back and forth, designing the tests and actually understanding their full needs. From our point of view, we found it very interesting. We've revisited Southampton University and it was fascinating going around the labs and, and finding out other people's take on things because we've very much got our traditional shipwrights hat on and it's interesting to talk to other people. Victory's sort of one of a kind. There are very few ships her size and age left in the world. She's still part of the Royal Navy, which is quite special as well. Just maintaining her for future generations is, is the big aim.